everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today, I am working on some images that I recently took at a gorgeous flower garden farm. It's tulip season and they were just beautiful. But I only had a couple minutes to shoot in this area and I just fell in love with this beautiful red tulip with the curls on the stem. But again, I could only take two shots. So I tried getting something close up without distractions, but I also got the full flower. So I'm trying to decide which one to edit. My considerations are number one, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this. I like the image, but it's not something that I wanna spend hours editing. Number two is what's going to give me the best results and not be hours of tedious editing. So those are the two things that I'm considering. Let me know if you run into editing dilemmas like this of which image to edit and what choice you would make. So as I look at the images, this close up view has a couple things that I would want to do. I would want to remove the flowers on the edge and that's going to be pretty easy in Photoshop. Second, though, I have this sweet curl that got cut off, so I would want to correct that. That's not too hard of an edit in Photoshop as well. That's really all that this image needs. So two pretty easy edits, that one might be the winner. Now for this image, I love that I have the full curl. I love that the way the spacing on the image looks, but man, I've got three flowers here I would want to remove. And those are gonna be pretty tedious, even using the new tools in Photoshop. But it could be worth it because again, I get the full structure, the full stem and all the beauty. So let me know which one you would edit, but I think I'm gonna get started with this first image. So let's jump in and see how quick we can make a couple impactful changes. All right, so let's jump over to Photoshop. And the first thing I wanna do is duplicate the background layer. I always like to do that, so I have a copy handy if I need it. And the first thing I wanna do is remove, I'm gonna use the remove tool to remove these areas that are just a little bit distracting because that is quick work. Using the remove tool here in Photoshop, it just does a great job for us. So I'm gonna click the checkbox and remove those side areas. Now you could have also blurred them. You could have, there's a lot of options, but I think for a quick edit, the remove tool does great. Now there's just a few spots. So I'm gonna go and click that area and there's a little bit right there. And we're just gonna click the checkbox and we'll have that, that part of the image edit all done. So that was nice and easy. All right, while I'm in here, I'm gonna check for any spots on the image just to make sure while I've got the remove tool handy. Now, if you're like me and you do several edits to an image, you may like to label your edits. So I'm just gonna come over here real quick, double click and call this remove so that I remember that that's what I did. So now I'm going to duplicate that layer and this is going to be our flower curl. So I'm gonna work on the curl. So there's a couple ways we could tackle this. Now, if you are a handy Photoshop user, you may be thinking, well, Lori, you could go over to this image, copy the curl and paste it on the other image. And absolutely, I could do that. But that's a little bit still tedious. And for beginner Photoshop users, that's a little bit challenging. So I wanted today show you quick ways that you can make big impact. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to expand the canvas and see how Photoshop will fix this for us. All right, so let me zoom out just a little bit or zoom in. We are going to use the crop tool and at the top here, you want to make sure you select Generative Expand, which is where AI is going to expand it for us, or you could do Content Aware Fill, which is the older version. I'm going to let Generative Expand do it for me. So let me just move this toolbar up so that you can see it. Let's move it up here to the top. And now what I'm going to do is come down to the bottom of the image and I'm going to extend the canvas just a little bit down so that it kind of matches that other image. And now we're just going to click Generate. 
And now Photoshop is going to give us some options of extending this canvas. I'm not sure I'm going to get quite the curl I had with the other um, image in my Lightroom, but we'll see what it does. If you haven't played with generative, generative Expand, it does a really nice job. So this is the first option. Not bad. It's not exactly accurate. Oh, look at that one. Look how gorgeous. That is very close to my original image that I showed you before. I don't like that one too much, but that one is a winner. And you can see if we turn this off and on, it's kept the detail in the bottom. It also extended this tulip. It's extended the tip. It's extended the bottom. And I think it's just done a great job. So there we have it. In just a couple quick steps, I was really able to transform this image to make it really simple, clean, and beautiful. So I think I made the right decision, but if you want to see how I would edit the other one, stay tuned and I'll walk you right through it. All right, so often you may have an image that does look like this, and I wanna give you a quick way to edit an image with these three distractions. So I am very happy with my decision to edit this image, but I wanna show you a really quick step to also edit this one. So let's go over and edit in Photoshop. This is not an advanced technique, and I think it is something handy that everyone needs to know how to use. All right, so we're gonna come right over here into Photoshop. Here is our image with all the distractions. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate the background layer, and I wanna come up, and let's just get off the selection tool. I want to go to, you can come up here to select and do select subject, or you can use your menu at the bottom. So what I wanna do is select subject and let's see how good Photoshop does. Oh my gosh, it did excellent. So we've got all of this tulip selected and most of the stem. So I can come up to the quick selection tool, grab the plus, and I wanna just get the rest of that stem right there. And we have an almost perfect selection, which is great. So really, really nice job. Let's see, I don't need that area, so let me grab my minus. I'm just gonna clean that up just a little bit, and it's great. All I'm worried about is making sure that this area of the tulip stem is protected because we want to remove this other area. All right, so now what I'm going to do is invert. So there's a box right here, just invert it. Now you're going to have the marching ants all around. At this point, we can use our remove tool and it's going to protect our flower as we remove. It's just gonna make it so much easier to come in and get close to our other flowers. So it is the best way I have found to remove something that's tedious and that is right next to another part of your image. So we're just gonna come in, kind of get this a little bit bigger here. You can see I can go over top that area and it is um, not being impacted. So let's just come down, just gonna remove this stem. I'm being pretty quick and sloppy with this, but I just wanted to give you the basic tool so that you will remember and know how to do this next time. Now, this first round of the remove probably isn't gonna get it all, but I'm then gonna show you my second step, which might be a little more remove and then some cloning. All right, so we're gonna see what it does to remove. Let Photoshop work its magic for us, and it's almost done. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. So simple. Our tulip was not impacted. So I have to say, you guys, this step may be just as fast as the first edit that I did using this incredible powerful tool. And I'm going to come down and just do some additional cleanup. Because my background is so 
blurred and like a painting, it doesn't hurt for me to come in and do some of this kind of remove smudging, I would call it, here on this part of the image. All right. Now, at this point, if you want to kind of correct this side, I would come in and use the clone tool. It is absolutely one of my favorite tools if you haven't seen my video on it. And I would just clone this area to kind of match. And I would just come around and bring all that leaves and the area back onto this side of the image. So now as we look at it, I'm actually going to take this area and just pop a little bit of that in there. Let's get some more of these leaves. There we go. I think we're done. I'm not sure that took any longer than the first edit that I did. So I just wanted to show you two different ways to tackle two different problem images using the remove tool, generative fill, and an easy subject mask. So I hope this was helpful and thanks so much for watching. Please click like and subscribe.